if I could take my pen and find a white space and circle it, you are doing it wrong. You're doing it so wrong. And there's, I wouldn't say there's nothing wrong with that because there's something wrong with that, but we're gonna fix it in this video, so stick around. Welcome back to my channel, Road to PhD on Kim's Take on Health TV, where we inspire and encourage black women in STEM. My name is Kimberly. I'm a bi STEM scholar at Howard University. I major in nutrition and minor in chemistry, and I plan on getting my PhD, so come on this journey with me. Didn't mean for that to rhyme. Anyway, for the month of January, I'll I have been giving tips and tricks on how to make sure that your application is chef's kiss for the um, summer research internship applications and last week we spoke about how to find the perfect program for you based on location mentor project research topic this week i'm going to be giving you resume and curriculum vitae tips also known as a cv and next week we'll be working on personal statements and the week after that we'll be working on recommendation letters and like who to ask who to not ask you want all the tea because trust me baby they're just some people you're not supposed to ask anywho we're gonna move on straight into resume so stick around for the rest of the video so there are uh, a few categories that you need to have on your resume. Remember, a resume is one singular page long. And I recommend that if you're a junior or above, you can like go into the CV world. But right now, let's focus on resume. So the categories that I have on my resume are education, research experience, professional experience, awards slash affiliation slash certifications. If you are a freshman and you do not have research experience, you can also put that as leadership experience or if you had high school experience, we could do that as well. So I'm gonna start off with the freshman. You might think, I have nothing to put on my resume. Oh my God, they're not gonna accept me. Literally, you can use anything from high school from like your junior year to now. If you're in the National Honor Society, if you did anything groundbreaking, whether it's like on a national scale or just in your community, anything that shows that you are A, passionate, B, dedicated, and C, a leader is amazing and you can totally just put that on your resume. Please do not feel discouraged at all. At all. As I said in one of the previous videos, my first research program, I was the youngest in the program. I was only 18. I was literally, as I said, the youngest in the program. I didn't think I was going to get in, but I got in. So never count yourself out, okay? Also for my high schoolers or my freshmen, if you, in the education category, I put Howard University, the location of Howard University, and um, when I expect my degree, what degree it is, so a bachelor's of science in nutritional sciences and my minor, which is chemistry. You can also put your high school, you can put like, I went to McNair Academic High School, Jersey City, New Jersey, and I just put what I my grade when I graduated, not my grade, my cumulative GPA, but it was not on a 4.0 scale, it was out of a hundred. So like you can totally just put that as well. So I'm not a fan of just basic resumes. I do believe that you can add some pizzazz to that. So you can like stick with like a banner of like gray, I have navy blue, you can do black, just something to like make it stand out. Remember the average recruiter looks on your looks at your resume for about 10 seconds. I do not know if it's the same for research but like you want to make sure it's succinct and to the point. The one thing that I recommend the most about resumes is that it has to have continuity and everything has to look the same. If you bolded all of the titles, you need to bold every single title after that. If you italicize one location, you have to italicize all the locations. If you ended up a sentence with a period, you have to end all the sentences with periods. If you started one description with a bullet, you have to do all the descriptions with a bullet. It's literally about continuity. If you put, um, I did this from June 2018 to August 2018, that sounded so New Jersey of me. <laughs> from June 2018 to August 2018, you have to make sure that everything else starts with a month and a year. 
And if you just said spring 2018 to summer 2018, you have to make sure that everything else starts with a season. And if you put a specific date, which I don't recommend, unless it's a presentation, but we're gonna get into CV soon, you can like do that as well. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. There's nothing wrong with making the font Times New Roman 11 or 10. There's nothing wrong with using the column version, not a column version, the column tool on your on your computer so you can have like something start here and then continue here. Nothing wrong with making the margins like literally this big and using all the space that you have. You should not have white space because that means you're not utilizing the page in order and you have not done much. When I tell you anything that you do, if you can quantify it, I help, I write a newsletter and it reaches 50 people a week i am the editor-in-chief of that of that like something like that not in those exact words but quantifying stuff is amazing and it's really helpful as well if you can quantify the numbers the impact the reach and i don't want you to feel like you have to be always compelled to quantify things because if you reach one person that's enough at least for me that's enough but when it comes to like a resume if you know how many people your executive board oversees like how many people are in your college like if you are the president of like co-ops or something which is a college of arts and sciences you probably help oversee a uh, like i don't know like 1200 students that's a lot of students that shows amazing leadership and you should totally put that on there you know So I became a big girl this year. I feel so proud of myself because I have a CV now, yes. So CV is a curriculum vitae and it's kind of like a resume except that it can have multiple pages and it's a little more in depth. And um, I decided to make one because I had more research experience and I had more presentations on my like list. So I'm gonna go over the categories on my CV. I have an education category, honors and awards category, a research experience category, presentations category, professional nutrition experience, professional affiliation, community outreach, memberships and organizations, and languages. In education, I just simply put that I go to Howard University. I put this location and the it's not a state. What is it? I don't remember. For the honors and, and awards, you don't have to spell it out. You can literally just be like, Dean's List, um, uh, first place in this, or association of this, blah, blah, blah. I wanted to spell it out and like give a synopsis of what it is or what the total was that I won, etc, etc. For presentations, I definitely um, put both scientific presentations and presentations that I've done as Miss Blue and White 2019-2020. Um, for professional nutrition experience, if you're not in a professional program, I recommend that you can dub this with clinical hours if you're pre-med and you've like um, shadowed uh, uh, a doctor if you shadowed a dentist you can put that there you can put the name of like the like I don't know family dental smiles company like something like that and you can put you can have a mini description and always the date as well professional affiliations again I'm in a professional program so I'm part of the new the New Jersey Dietetic Association and I'm also part of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and that's like a big deal so I put that there and a lot of students don't know that you can join professional academies because they have student discounts so I recommend that if you want to be a part of the American Medical Association there's probably a student membership part for that and it just looks really good you get the newsletters you get to connect with them they have networking events and I recommend you do that as soon as possible I know that there's one for the uh, American Society of Microbiology if you're into microbiology for community outreach this is anything that you've done um, whether in high school if you're a junior I don't recommend you go past junior year of high school, go before junior year of high school, but if you're a freshman, feel free to use all of your high school experience for community outreach as well. I definitely um, put like ASB on there, which is alternative spring break when I went to Puerto Rico, the mentorship program that I'm a part of now, and then like DC Central Kitchen, like stuff that I do. And then for membership and organizations, I, I just put all the memberships and organizations I'm a part of, and languages, I put English native language Spanish intermediate listener and novice speaker and then for French novice listener and novice speaker so you can totally and novice means new or early beginner 
I remember when that was a, a category in track and field. But anyway, let's get on it. Because CVs are multiple pages, I recommend having a um, either a header or a footer with your last name and the page number. So I have Gardner-1, Gardner-2, Gardner-3, Gardner-4. So you could totally do that as well. And now I'm going to get a little more scientific, considering that this is for science um, summer research internship programs. When it comes to your research internship programs, when it, um, I recommend you outline them this way. You put the title. If you see me looking, I'm looking at the computer so I can help you. Be great. Um, I put the title of the program. So for example, Minority Health International Research Training Program. And then on the other column, I put the, the month and the year. So it was from May 2019 to August 2019. And then underneath it, I put the university, um, the University of Alabama at Birmingham, Birmingham, Alabama in parentheses. But then the thing about MERT is that I had a training site and it was Western Regional Health Authority, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I worked on two projects. I was a first author on one and a second author on the other. So for the first one, it was knowledge, attitude, and practices among healthcare providers, etc., etc. The second one is smoking prevalence, etc., etc. And then I also put fuels of study because a lot of the research that I've done is not, um, it, it just varies. So fields of study, I put for this specific one, nutrition, public health, and epidemiology. For my first research experience that I had at UC San Diego, my fields of study were pathology and neurobiology. And then my global leadership international train interdisciplinary training, I mean research program, was the fields of study were pre-doctoral studies, readiness, and sports medicine. And then there's also and then the next category should be mentor. So the name of the mentor and their department. So I put like Dr. Pauline Jolly, their credentials, PhD and PH, comma, Department of Pathology or Dr. Nigel Kaka, comma, PhD, comma, Department of Pathology. So just stuff like that, that's very important to add. Scientific presentations, it's important to make sure that you remember the date of the presentation, like the actual date, not like around when, but just the date because it kind of happened once, you know, it wasn't continued. So I would put like scientific presentation. Um, you can do the presentations in either APA format or I don't remember what format this is. I just literally borrowed a friend's CV and used that. So I put like scientific presentation in bold um quotation marks knowledge attitudes and practices etc so the title of the present presentation and i started i said presented at the annual biomedical research conference for minority students in anaheim california period november 21st 2019 and it's just it just continues like that There's absolutely nothing wrong with having more than one resume or cv like i have one that's just in general and i have one that's like research scientific based and i know there are some people that have one for like work like if they're in like retail and um research and i don't know leadership so it's like there's nothing wrong with having multiple copies always send your stuff in a pdf just in case like the format so you don't want the format to change always 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 have a word version on your computer as well so that you can or a google doc version so that you can edit it there's nothing worse than having a resume or cv that you can't edit thank you for coming on this journey with me phd roadies i'll see you on the road make sure that you like comment and subscribe make sure you actually check out what's in the description box if you're into achieving food freedom intuitive eating overcoming emotional eating check out my blog www.kimstakeonhealth.com where i put out a lot of nutrition tips because uh, that is my field of study i'm so excited to have you guys here make sure you follow me on instagram and i'll talk to you next week bye